Now let's take a quick look at our new ocean geometry system and how it can generate and fade away detail as needed. Now we're pretty high up in the atmosphere and right now we have some of our anti-tiling VFX turned off so we can really see what's going on. But right now if you were to go into wireframe mode, we could see that the ocean looks quite different. And something that's cool is that you could see these sort of levels of details based on camera position. And let's see what happens if we start getting in closer. Now you could see that new levels are being generated and more and more. Right now we have a really big low res ocean sim uh, happening for the swells and a very high detailed one for the closer little waves, which you could see being generated now. Now you could see this was quite a seamless transition. In fact, if we were to go into lit mode, you could see pretty much no artifact swimming or LOD transitioning. But how does it all work? Well, we have these three new parameters and let's just pause our ocean and go over them and what they do. So to set it all up, let's just set all of these to zero and start off with a the quad distance factor. Now this is a quad tree like setup and this will basically tell us how big the detailed ocean grid needs to be. If we set it to something really low like uh, three or five, you could see that wave details start really about here. But something else to keep in mind is that this system is still to a degree screen space. So for example, if we start getting higher, you could see that more levels of details are being generated near the horizon, pretty much where we need them. And the way it works is that if we were to go to wireframe mode, you could see that as the lowest level of detail here is being blended away, it's actually being transferred to the outside where we need it. And this kind of really is cool because it means that you have a sort of set in stone amount of polygons based on these three factors. Now for something like a top down a project or a game, you could get away with a low value like five, maybe even three to an extent. So right now we're quite high, but something like this might still work, depending on your camera position. Uh, generally for a third person or first person project, we recommend something like nine or maybe even 10, 11. Let's see what happens if we set it to 10. So if we get really close, we could see a very small jitter of an LOD near the horizon over here. If this is something you don't want, well, simply set the distance factor to 11. And there we go. At the moment, we're using the default sky atmosphere and fog. So these are the kind of distances that you probably might be kind of getting used to. And we could, if we move the camera, we could kind of see those LODs kind of being blended in and faded out. But let's have a look at the other parameters. So this was a way zoomed in picture. Uh, typically you'd be working with something like an FOV of 75 or 90. Uh, personally, something like 90 works better for us. So let's just set it like so. Next up, let's say we have a very high detailed ocean that we're simulating right now and we want an, a low FOV shot. So for example, something like this, and say we want to zoom in at around our cube. So this is all great, but let's go into our uh, wireframe mode. And we could see that with the current settings around our objects of interest, the cube, we're not really getting a lot of detail. Well, this is where grid density factor comes in. Let's just set our initial value to eight. And what this does, it will add a subdivision level to the ocean geometry. So for example, at one, we're generating more detail, two, even more, and three. For higher end platforms or high quality higher end PCs, a value like three is very much manageable. If you wanna go for something like a cinematic visual, you could go with something up to five. And now you could see that we're way zoomed in and we're getting like a bunch of details. Let's see what this looks like in viewport. So we're getting, oops, all the details from all the small waves and everything that we're simulating as geometry, something like three, one or two, 
you could see as being blended in. Now, if we go to something like five, and let's just zoom out for demonstration purposes, you could see that we're getting every little ripple that we could see here as geometry. If we were to go back to wireframe mode, our ocean is basically solid. Now, this is way of an overkill, and this is meant to be for cinematic projects only, but this is what's great about this system, is that it's very scalable. We'd recommend something like one or two, but let's leave it at zero for now and move on to our next system. So right now, this is a pretty interesting case because we have large swells and small levels of details. And if we were to start moving our camera around, we could see that in some cases, our lowest LOD or highest level of detail is being offset quite dramatically, for example, over here by the large swells of the of the waves. This is because the large swell animation has a horizontal and vertical offset, so it will move the surface um, sideways, for lack of a, to put it simply. And this means that sometimes our lower or higher quality of details may be moving away from the camera and we're kind of almost paying for triangles that we're not really taking advantage of all the way over here. This is where the grid scale comes in because it allows us to shift these levels of details around. For example, we wanna say, well, this little detail, we don't need it here. It'd be much more useful if it goes towards the horizon. So let's do that. And there we go. Our lowest level or highest quality is now this. The second has moved farther away. Now, practically, in this case, we could do this for the second level as well. And there we go. Now we have a, now our triangles are make much more sense in that we're getting all of this detail near the camera and we're getting a little bit more uh, large swell um, details around the horizon. Now, if we set the FOV to something like this, so we could see what's happening near the horizon, we could see that if we set it to zero, this is what we're getting. But say we were happy with our quad distance of eight and we've set it to, and now we've set the scale to two. Well, this allows us to drop it from eight to maybe seven. Let's see, six, ah, seven will do. And with these two, you could really kind of fine tune where you want these triangles and the middle value, how many triangles you want. Let's try and zoom out a little bit. For projects where you're concerned with poly counts, you could go with a very high grid scale, something like three or four, and then the quad distance factor will be nice and low. And at this point, the ocean is looking pretty low res. So for example, let's go into our lit mode, and this is what we got. Now we're simulating a very high FFT simulation of 2K over here, and we're losing like a, a lot of these details, but for a lower end device, this is pretty great. Now let's take a look at how some of the LODs might be affected by this. So if we were to zoom way in, and we should start seeing some of the details being generated. And this may seem quite harsh at the moment, but we're also using some pretty low values and we're way zoomed in. Under more traditional FOV of 75, it's pretty hard to notice. But still, if you encounter this and you want to get rid of it, well, the simplest way would be to add more geometry. So we need to add, uh, we need to lower the, bring some of these LODs, something like two, and bump up the density factor to, uh, let's start with two. And now you could see that the overall transition is much smoother because you, we're working with more triangles and it's a bit more pleasant. We could go with something like maybe three, and you can see now that the transition is much smaller. Again, because we're dealing with more triangles, which are smaller, so the overall uh, shift in area is much smaller. Now, this is all while the ocean is paused, but during animation, it's pretty much invisible while things are happening. Now, let's look at something like large world coordinates. And for the purposes of this, let's grab our cube and say, let us go to a location of, whoops, make sure we have selected our cube. What is this? Two million, 
I believe, and go to it. And let's see if we're getting some large world coordinates errors. So if we were to go into Warframe mode, things are actually working quite well. Let's drop the grid density factor so we could see if any er errors show up at all. So things are looking pretty good. Let's grab our whoops, cube and increase the distance by a factor of 10. And if we get up close, things are looking pretty good, but we're getting some shimmering. If we were to go into wireframe mode, uh, ah, there we go. We're getting some errors. Unreal is not liking this. Well, we have accounted for this. And at the moment, this is an editor only kind of issue. So for example, uh, if we have our ocean camera tracker set to single player, if we go into play mode and just pause this for a minute, hit F8, we could see that the errors have been corrected. So during play, the ocean will figure out the location and uh, sort of translate these large world coordinates to all of these uh, offsets and special effects. Now, let's talk a little bit about underwater surface enable and how it works, because we've introduced some changes to the way underwater effects work. And let's go back to uh, something like this. And now, by default, there is no underwater effects here. So what we need to do is enable them. First of all, we need to enable underwater surface enable. And now we could see that we have an underwater mesh. And because we have some really high steepness on the waves, it can poke through in some places. This can be adjusted from the ocean sim simulation parameters over here for ocean height and steepness. But we're not going to do right now. We're just going to focus on the effects themselves. And something else we need to do is under waterline uh, settings over here. We need to enable the underwater post process effects and because we have some really big swells we should make these unbound so it can account for the large differences in height here and there we go we have underwater effects a separate underwater material for the visuals over here will be responsible for this but if you don't want to use this material you can enable underwater stencil only and if we enable this we're still getting the underwater effects without the material and we are still getting that really nice split view, but then we could use the slightly more efficient version of going into water surface material here and enabling the two-sided parameters. And there we go. Now we have the ocean working pretty much as expected. Now these places where the mesh has folded in on itself are still there and they do look a bit different because they're based off the same material. Now. Let's look at some of the new foam options that are coming to the Gen 4 Ocean Actor in this update. So, for starters, we have a high quality FFT simulated ocean, and let's just enable foam. And with the current setup, we have our just regular old foam from before working as intended, which kind of controls how strongly foam is being generated and how much it fades away. With the current settings, this is what we're getting. And this is pretty good for most purposes, but this system can sometimes struggle to create nice looking foam with our pre-baked ocean. So let's turn on advanced foam and see what happens. Now you could see that we're generating foam from a lot of small places. And this is where the top two parameters here come in. One is called advanced foam filter scale. And basically we're applying a filter to see which waves should be generating foam. The smaller the value here means that smaller wavelets being generated will also that are being simulated will also generate foam. Let's see what happens if we set it to something like five. Well, immediately you could see that only the larger waves are generating foam, but this is quite strong at the moment. So the filter power should probably be lowered to something like 0 0.05. And there we have it. Now we're kind of generating a more detailed overall foam. But we, on top of that, we also have an additional parameter for a sort of a wind mask. And this means that we're kind of going to be masking out where foam is being generated based on wind direction. And this is independent from the ocean simulation wind. So you could get some pretty interesting results with these three values over here. So first of all, let's set the mask power to one. And now we could see that the foam stopped being generated on one side of the waves angle being based on the angle set here. Let's try something like 90. 
and things are looking a bit better. Now, one thing to remember is that if you have enabled the this pr uh, parameter here, the top two are still in play. This means that the two systems are working on top of each other, so you can still mix and match and get some quite interesting results. Wind mask scale is the sort of intensity of the wind mask, the, um, if you will, vertical angle of the overall wind being applied to it. So for example, now we have a pretty intense windy looking ocean and we can probably bump the foam decay a bit more. And there we go. We're getting some quite aggressive generation of foam, quite aggressive fading away of the foam to have something a bit more um, stormy looking. Now in our next example, what you're currently seeing is how you could mix and match these parameters as shown to create storm streaks for the foam. Now this is, was quite difficult to simulate in the past, but right now we could do it with a combination of the parameters that we have. Something else to point out is that the parameters here deal with the simulation of the foam, whereas the visual aspects of the foam can be further tuned from the water surface material from these parameters here. So we could lower, for example, the overall uh, add factor to the foam, which kind of adds in a white mask. We can tweak the, the amount of bubbles that we're generating, foam texture strength, normals, and so on and so on to get just the foam that you need. And here you could see all the systems that we've kind of gone over in this video working together. The foam is being based on the smaller, higher quality FFT sim, and the larger swells are being layered on top of it, creating a nice complex ocean with great foam and great levels of detail. Thank you for sticking around for so long. Now go make awesome things.